Every prayer must pass two tests. It must be God's will. It must be for his glory. It's going to represent him, build him up. Before entering in this valley of dry bones, chapter 36, the Lord says to Ezekiel, prophesy to the mountains. Speak to the mountains. Several times he declares that. Speak, prophesy to the mountains. Before you enter the valley, speak to it. And so he prophesies to the mountain of Israel. Now, when you speak to an inanimate object, something that's not living, you're talking to it, people think you're crazy. Have you noticed that? That's why we don't talk out loud. That's why we don't pray out loud. You know, we want people to think we're crazy. I'll try this, but... Or Jesus, or I just want to... Know. We don't want everyone to know we're speaking to it. But when you speak to dead bones, it's more challenging. So you've got to learn to speak to your mountains first. At some point in your life, you're going to stand up and you're going to speak to your habit, you're going to speak to your addiction, and it's going to be broken. You're going to speak to the goal and you're going to achieve it. You're going to speak to a relationship and it will be restored. It will be redeemed. You're going to speak to a problem or a situation that's come upon you. And God is going to be active. You have to stop talking to God about the mountains you face and start talking to the mountains about the God you serve. That's not just some catchy saying. We spend all this time, oh God, it's so bad, I just want you to know it's bad, it's bad. There's a time to cry. There's a time for that. That's in the first phase. But you better grow past that. You got to get to a place where you're hearing what God has to say. We spend all our time wishing and hoping and, hey, God, if you think about it and, you know, whatever. But we never talk to the situation. Do you know who my God is? Do you know what he has said about you, this situation, this circumstance? I now speak to you. I prophesy to the mountain. So he speaks to the mountain. You have to prom- prophesy his promises, his power, his love, his grace, his truth. Jesus said, if you have faith as small, it's a teeny little seed, as a mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will. He wasn't just talking about dirt. He's talking about all the things that we face. What does Jesus do in the storm? I love this one. He gets up in a rocking boat. There's a storm. It is throwing this boat around, waves and water. He gets up in this rocking boat. He says, be still. It's rocking. It's unsafe. I don't know what to do. Stand up and speak to it. Jesus is having fishermen who are experts on the water relearn the wisdoms of God, not their wisdom. And they cried, even the winds and the waves, they obey him. Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Is there a mountain you need to move? Is there a situation you're facing that's overwhelming? Is there a thought? Is there a need just in, in, in your daily direction of life? Will you need God to come in and speak to you? In the storm, there needs to be the skill where you'll pray bold prayers. Ezekiel 3, 6, 8 says, But you, O mountains of Israel, Ezekiel is taking, shall shoot forth branches. You'll yield fruit. For the people of Israel, you're going to produce. You've been barren. You have taken. Now you're going to produce. Reminds me of the prophets. The prophets in Joel say, I will restore to you the years that the locust has stolen. You think you've lost time? You're behind? God restores. 
Jeremiah, I know the plans I have you. Plans to prosper. Zephaniah, for every trouble, I will render double blessing. That's a good promise to hang on to. When will you allow his words to breathe on you? When will you allow the Holy Spirit to breathe on you? Second Chronicles 1, Corinthians 1.20 no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. They guess that the number of promises are somewhere between 3,573 3, to 5,464 because it depends on how you're counting the, pro- the promises and whether you're lumping them together or counting them individual. And they're all yes. This is what I will do. Yes. This is what I have been t- I'm wanting to do. Yes. So you need to add your amen. Turn to somebody and say amen. Turn to somebody else say amen. You have to add your amen by praying, declaring his word. In faith, telling that mountain to move. Amen. With words out loud. Out loud, telling that storm to stop. Amen. In authority with Jesus, telling Lazarus to come forth. Amen. You add your amen to his promises. God's word has a transitive property. We're grafted into it. I grew up on a farm, and one of the things that they do is, is that the root system of an English tree is terrible. But of a black walnut tree, it's strong. They spread out the roots, and you know, they, say they do a great job. The English tree would just blow over the simple wind. So what they did is they grow the tree. They get a good root system. They cut the tree off. Then they take the stem of an English walnut tree, and they graft it. Was it cutting a hole and tarring and it into that other thing? And now it grows together. It has a strong root system and it produces the best nuts. You've been grafted into God's promises with this covenant. You've been replanted into that. We gain access to the promises by the covenant. Joshua 1, 3 says, I will give you everywhere you set your foot. This verse was quickened to me, and, and, and a month ago, we went around for 13 miles around the church, and we just prayed that God's presence would come with such power in that area. And in, in January, we're going to go out into our neighborhoods and, and draw small circles, and then again in March, we're going to come back for Easter, and we're going to repray that all, because we're praying and believing, God, you're going to come to this area. We're going to have authority over it. You're going to move, and you're going to touch people's lives. That promise was just for Joshua. No, if you study the scripture, really that promise was for Moses. And God says, just as I did for Moses, I will do for you. And that tentative, that transitorative power has been granted to you and I. Here's, here, I'm just going to help you. We're, We're always trying to, well, I don't think, you know, that's a little overreach. You you never believe enough of what God will do. We never overbelieve about God. We always underbelieve. I think it's time we really start believing in God. Jeremiah 112, I watch over my word to perform it. Your messenger, speak the words I give to you. I do the work. Just deliver the message. Speak the words. Close your eyes. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, strengthen me. Strengthen my faith.
Strengthen my spirit. Strengthen my understanding and wisdom. Strengthen. Strengthen. Strengthen me. Amen. With this backdrop, we finally get to go to the Valley of Dry Bones. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. Oh, those words should just knock you down. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. It's not about me. It's not what I'm doing. It's not what I'm saying. He is on me. He's working through me. It is happening because of him. If, if Ezekiel 37 flips the script, it goes from all these warnings to, uh, to another thing. And Ezekiel actually means God strengthens. God strengthens. Now he speaks life and hope. Verse 1, the hand of the Lord is upon me. And he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. And he set me down in the midst of the valley. It was full of bones. He said to me, son of man, can these bones live? Can your dream live? Can your situation live? Can you live? Can it be different for you? Or is this some other message? Can my body live? Can my finances live? Can my calling live? I'm just overwhelmed right now. God, I don't know whether it can. Only you do, Ezekiel says. He said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, Lord, only you know. He said, then prophesy. Speak my words, is the translation, to these bones and say to them, oh, you dry bones, hear. Hear the word of the Lord. Have you stood up to your situation and said, hear. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear. If we spend more time doing that instead of crying and huddled in our beds and wondering what's going to happen, hear. Hear the word of the Lord. God, you're going to give me wisdom in this situation. God, you're going to give me insight. God, you're going to show me what to say. God, you're going to heal me. You're going to restore me. God, I'm hearing your word. Hello, I hope we've added value to your life today. Uh, Will you take a moment to subscribe so that you don't miss any live streams? And then the other thing I want to let you know is share this with a friend. And just remember, every Sunday, you can be with us live. Thanks for sharing this moment.